Have you ever been diagnosed with bacterial vaginosis and you've been confused? Um, even feeling a bit stigmatized because you've not been sexually active, but you've heard that, oh, it happens because of sexual activity. Um, so if you've ever felt that way, you're not alone. So let us try and clear this misconception up. The truth is that you can definitely get bacterial vaginosis without having sex. Okay, so let's look at how that happens so that you're, you know, armed with the right information. What is BV? What is bacterial vaginosis? So first thing to understand is that it's not a classic infection. It's more, it's happening because of an imbalance of the natural germ that lives inside our bodies, inside the vagina. So the vagina is like a garden. Let's think about it that way. Or a, an ecosystem that you need to balance acid and base, okay? It's naturally populated with different types of germs, mainly the good ones. We call them lactobacilli. And what they do is they produce lactic acid, which helps to keep the vaginal environment slightly acidic. So the reason I said it's a garden is because it's an ecosystem. I think ecosystem is a better word. It's like a, a, a little community where you have germs and they are doing, I know we say germs as if it's a bad word, but these are good germs whose activity is producing or providing some protection to the vagina by way of the lactic acid. So bacterial vaginosis is not something that you catch. You don't catch it from someone, someone else the way you catch a classic sexual infection. It's actually somehow the shift goes from a large number of the good bacteria to a large number of the bad bacteria. And that is what causes a problem. So when the population, the balance of germs changes from more of the good ones that, that are doing useful things, to the bad ones, allows the bad ones to overgrow. That's where the problem happens. One of the key baddies, bad guys, is called Gardnerella vaginalis. And so it's one of the germs implicated in BV. And what makes it a very special drug or germ is because it can create a sticky film, a sticky layer over the vaginal wall, which then shelters other germs and makes it much more difficult to treat the imbalance. Okay, so because the germ is not being introduced into you from someone else. It's actually the germ inside your own body that is overgrowing. That's what is special about BV, okay? So what causes this imbalance? There are a few things, you know, we say to women who get BV frequently, we say to them, BV is more likely to happen due to fluctuations in your menstrual cycle or after you just had a baby or around perimenopause. These are times when there's a change in that acid balance uh, because your period, for example, can introduce blood into your vagina, which has a neutral pH. And so that temporarily affects how acidic the vagina itself is, and that might cause BV to develop, okay? Other things that can make you more at risk of developing BV are smoking. So chemicals from smoking, uh, they can get pushed or secreted into the vaginal fluid, and then they can damage those protective germs, the lactobacilli that make the lactic acid. Something else is IUD, the coil, okay? The presence of a coil can sometimes make it easier for that biofilm, that film that's produced by the body on its surface. And so that's a reservoir for those germs around the coil. So that's something else to be aware of. Another thing, and I'm always telling you guys about douching. I know some of you think, oh, it doesn't affect me. Mm. Douching can wash away those protective germs. That's a simple way to reduce, cause that dysbiosis, that disbalance between good germs and the bad ones. So medical recommendation, do not douche. And then something else is your genetics, okay? Your makeup, your genetic makeup. Some women's body, some women's vagina, just simply have a less robust strain. Can I use that term? less robust strain of the protective lactobacilli. So they are more prone to imbalance for reasons we don't know. It's just their genetic makeup. Anyway, so BV happens. We have antibiotics to treat it. Most women are okay, but there's a large number of women where it keeps coming back. It's painful. BV is something that causes a copious amount of thin vaginal discharge with a fishy odor. It is distressing. It's uncomfortable. It's just a it's uncomfortable. It's a pain. So imagine this happening over and over again. Every few weeks, you're back again with the symptom. Many women struggle with recurrent BV. And before, we didn't really understand what was going on. It was difficult to understand what is the situation. But one of the ways to understand it is now that we're realizing that it's not a sexually transmitted infection, 
And it's really important for you to know that we do not class BV as an STI, but there are some ways that you might think, oh, but doesn't it behave like an STI? Let me explain. Men don't get BV. I mean, think about it. Men don't have vaginas, okay? But the germ that is overgrown and responsible for BV can move on to your male partner's tissues and hang around the skin of the penis. And they sort of reside there because remember, they make that sticky film that can help them to stick to tissue. And so they go, they go on, they transfer onto the men. They don't infect the men or cause any problems. Then when you have sex again, transfers back to you. You see how that can be a problem. <laughs> and again, the, the germ is not even carried in the men's sexual tissue in the semen. Okay, so it's really a transfer problem. It's like transferring from one, you know, when the tissues are rubbing together, transferring from one to the next. So it's not going into the man's tissue to grow there and multiply there. It's sort of hanging around, uh, around the surface of the, um, the penis or the skin around the area so that next time there's sex, it will transfer back to the woman where it can cause the problem. Okay. So the other thing to mention is that that risk is higher in if your partner is uncircumcised because they can then hide and multiply under the foreskin. It provides a protective environment. And so the male partners being a silent space or reservoir of the germ is something that we're becoming more, uh, we're, we're coming to understand better and could be what is helping in some women to trigger the recurrence. So recently we've had studies that have tested this. They've tested treating the male partners of women with recurrent BV with a combination of tablet antibiotics and antibiotic cream. And they found some really amazing results that when the male partner was treated, the recurrence of BV in their women, their female partners, was almost cut in half. So this is a very new protocol. So it's not something that's national yet. It's something that is, you know, we're still understanding this, looking at whether it will be replicated in all over, you know, in different settings. Because just because a study says that this happened here doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen somewhere else. So this is, you know, a fairly new study, but it's promising. That is really promising information and can be the answer for so many, many women. Okay. Uh, I would think that if you suffer from recurrent BV, then it's, you know, your doctor might just need to think about the concept of treating your partner as well. And it may be that your doctor needs to refer you to a specialist, a sexual health specialist, a, a genital urinary medicine specialist or gynecologist to sort of sit down with both of you and consider the value of, you know, partner treatment. So what does this mean for you? I want you to don't feel ashamed and do not blame yourself. Okay, BV is a common condition and there are different risk factors that I already mentioned that could lead to that disbalance, that dysbiosis in the good germs and bad germs within the vagina. And now being aware of it, you can see it's nothing to do with hygiene, but it's about, it's about being aware of it and then reducing whatever risks. So for example, if you smoke, stopping smoking can help. That might reduce your risk of developing this and happy, happening recurrently. Uh, if you're somebody who has an IUD uh, coil and you keep getting recurring BV, then the next step will be to take away the IUD and see, you know, if your symptoms settle down. Stop, stop douching, especially if you're some, someone who experiences recurrent bacterial vaginosis. And like I said, if it's something that you have been struggling with for manner of treatments, you keep getting the infection and so on, it is worthwhile having a conversation with your, uh, your doctor to sort of look at what are the next steps, how can we move forward with this uh, with this situation